the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for a crop of grapes but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I look for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will commit the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but seed bloodshed. For justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lays it waste, and the beasts of the field. Feed. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, in prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other tenants, more numerous than the first ones but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce that at, at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed Sunday to all of you, especially our uh, brothers and sisters who are, are at home who are watching this uh, TV Mass. Special shout out to the people of St. Rita. What does the parable say to us? And let me share with you four things today about this parable. The first one is that this parable, my brothers and sisters, summarizes the complete biblical story of salvation. The first leasing of the vineyard refers to the old covenant. The second leasing of the vineyard refers to the new covenant. The parable affirms that Jesus is the Son of God. And the last person sent to the tenant farmers is not another slave. He is the vineyard owner's own son. Third, the parable affirms that Jesus' apostles are the new leaders of God's people. And fourthly, 
The parable teaches us about God's patience with us and our accountability to God. The vineyard owner made three efforts to get the tenant farmers to change their ways. When he saw more patience was futile, he passed judgments on the tenants. He held them accountable for their actions. So it is the same way with God and us. Our Heavenly Father is infinitely patient. But the time will come when God's patience will give way to judgment. We too will be held accountable for our actions. And so, my brothers and sisters, today's parable was not intended merely for the chief priests, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, but during Jesus' time. It was also intended for us. It summarizes the biblical story of salvation. It teaches us that Jesus is the true Son of God. It teaches that Jesus' apostles are the new leaders of God's people. And finally, it teaches us about God's great patience toward us and our own accountability to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church in the world as the Holy Father, Pope Francis, convenes the Synod of Bishops May those gathered at the Synod remain open to grace and approach all things in their discussions and consideration with humility and courage and the heart of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the words of the Gospel today remind us that we must strive to be people who take all we gain from our devotion, prayer, and dedication to the practice of the faith into the world so we may bear good fruit on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength, humility, and commitment to always treat others with mercy, justice, kindness, and love, remembering that our people, no matter their station in life, are all brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For all those in need of our charity, especially those who are hungry, homeless, suffering from illness, and those who are lonely, may we extend our prayer and action to assist them with all we have learned through our devotion to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Holy Father, we ask to accept the sacrifice with humble and contrite heart. Blessed be God forever. 
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep, in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, when with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, the word and my soul shall be healed. A prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to receive the Holy Eucharist at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Body of Christ. Though many, we are one bread, one body, for we we'll all partake of the one bread and one chalice. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Now that we've received Jesus sacramentally, spiritually, we ask him to stay with us. Grant us peace, O Lord, heal us, bless us, strengthen us. We remember our brothers and sisters who are sick, who are at home right now. Heal them, O Lord, both body and spirit. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. The blessing of the Father and the Son. And may the spirit of love, the spirit of joy, be with you evermore. And may the Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. 
And do thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who wander throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Jesus, he